The Svalbard Treaty, originally the Spitsbergen Treaty recognizes the sovereignty of Norway over the Arctic archipelago of Svalbard, at the time called Spitsbergen. The exercise of sovereignty is, however, subject to certain stipulations, and not all Norwegian law applies. The treaty regulates the demilitarization of the archipelago. The signatories were given equal rights to engage in commercial activities mainly coal mining on the islands. As of 2012, Norway and Russia are making use of this right. Uniquely, the archipelago is an entirely visa-free zone under the terms of the Svalbard Treaty. The treaty was signed on the 9th of February 1920 and submitted for registration in the League of Nations Treaty Series on the 21st of October 1920. There were 14 original high contracting parties: Denmark, France, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, the United Kingdom, including the dominions of Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and South Africa, as well as India and the United States. Of the original signatories, Japan was the last to ratify the treaty on 2 April 1925, and it came into force on 14 August 1925. Several additional nations acceded to the treaty after it was ratified by the original signatories. As of 2018, there are 46 parties to the treaty. Topic. Name of the treaty Topic. The original treaty is entitled the Treaty Recognizing the Sovereignty of Norway over the Archipelago of Spitsbergen. It refers to the entire archipelago as Spitsbergen, which had been the only name in common usage since 1596 with minor variations in spelling. In 1925, five years after the conclusion of the treaty, the Norwegian authorities proceeded to officially rename the islands Svalbard. This new name was a modern adaptation of the ancient toponym Svalbari, attested in the Norse sagas as early as 1194. The exonym, Spitsbergen, subsequently came to be applied to the main island in the archipelago. Accordingly, in modern historiography the Treaty of Spitsbergen is commonly referred to anachronistically as the Svalbard Treaty to reflect the name change. History The archipelago was discovered by the Dutch explorer Willem Berendt S. Z. in 1596 and named Spitsbergen, meaning, sharp peaked mountains. It was uninhabited. The islands were renamed in the 1920s by Norway as Svalbard. Spitsbergen, Svalbard began as a territory free of a nation, with people from different countries participating in industries including fishing, whaling, mining, research, and later, tourism. Not belonging to any nation left Svalbard largely free of regulations or laws, though there were conflicts over the area due to whaling rights and sovereignty disputes between England, the Netherlands and Denmark-Norway in the first half of the 17th century. By the 20th century mineral deposits were found on the main island and continual conflicts between miners and owners created a need for a government. Topic. Contents. Topic. The Spitsbergen Treaty was signed in Paris on 9 February 1920, during the Versailles negotiations after World War I. In this treaty, international diplomacy recognized Norwegian sovereignty the Norwegian administration went in effect by 1925 and other principles relating to Svalbard. This includes Svalbard is part of Norway, Svalbard is completely controlled by and forms part of the Kingdom of Norway. However, Norway's power over Svalbard is restricted by the limitations listed below. Taxation. This allows taxes to be collected, but only enough to support Svalbard and the Svalbard government. This results in lower taxes than mainland Norway and the exclusion of any taxes on Svalbard supporting Norway directly. Also, Svalbard's revenues and expenses are separately budgeted from mainland Norway. Environmental conservation, Norway must respect and preserve the Svalbard environment. Non-discrimination, all citizens and all companies of every nation under the treaty are allowed to become residents and to have access to Svalbard including the right to fish, hunt or undertake any kind of maritime, industrial, mining or trade activity. The residents of Svalbard must follow Norwegian law, though Norwegian authority cannot discriminate against or favour any residents of any given nationality. Military restrictions, Article 9 prohibits naval bases and fortifications and also the use of Svalbard for warlike purposes. It is not, however, entirely demilitarized. 
Topic: <laughs> Disputes regarding natural resources. Topic: <laughs> Topic: 200 nautical mile 370 kilometers zone around Svalbard. Topic. There has been a long-running dispute, primarily between Norway and Russia and before it, the Soviet Union over fishing rights in the region. In 1977, Norway established a regulated fishery in a 200 nautical mile 370 kilometers zone around Svalbard though it did not close the zone to foreign access. Norway argues that the treaty provisions of equal economic access apply only to the islands and their territorial waters four nautical miles at the time but not to the wider exclusive economic zone. In addition, it argues that the continental shelf is a part of mainland Norway's continental shelf and should be governed by the 1958 Continental Shelf Convention. The Soviet Union, Russia disputed and continues to dispute this position and consider the Spitsbergen Treaty to apply to the entire zone. Talks were held in 1978 in Moscow but did not resolve the issue. Finland and Canada support Norway's position, while most of the other treaty signatories have expressed no official position. The relevant parts of the treaty are as follows. Ships and nationals of all the high contracting parties shall enjoy equally the rights of fishing and hunting in the territories specified in Article 1 and in their territorial waters. From Article 2. They shall be admitted under the same conditions of equality to the exercise and practice of all maritime, industrial, mining or commercial enterprises both on land and in the territorial waters, and no monopoly shall be established on any account or for any enterprise whatever. From Article 3. Topic. Natural resources outside the 200 nautical mile 370 kilometers zone Topic. Mainly the dispute is about whether the Svalbard Treaty also is in effect outside the 12 nautical mile territorial sea. According to Norway's largest newspaper, Aftenposten. If the treaty comes into effect outside the zone, then Norway will not be able to claim the full 78% of profits of oil and gas harvesting, said Aftenposten in 2011. Parties Topic. A list of parties sorted alphabetically is shown below. The dates below reflect when a nation deposited its instrument of ratification or accession. Some parties are successor states to the countries that joined the treaty, as noted below. Yugoslavia also acceded to the treaty on 6 July 1925, but as of 2018 none of its successor states have declared to continue application of the treaty. See also List of treaties Topic. References Topic. Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. Literature Topic. Mo, Arild, Shea, Peter Johan the 18th of November 2005 the High North, Challenges and Potentials", PDF. Prepared for French-Norwegian Seminar at IFRI, Paris, 24 November 2005. Fridtjof Nansen Institute, www.fni.no. Archived from the original PDF on 7 December 2008. Retrieved of August 2008. External links Topic. Treaty between Norway, the United States of America, Denmark, France, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, Great Britain and Ireland and the British Overseas Dominions and Sweden concerning Spitsbergen signed in Paris 9 February 1920. Treaty concerning the archipelago of Spitsbergen Svalbard Treaty and Ratification in Norwegian Svalbard, an important arena, speech by Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs, 15 April 2006.